probably the biggest, well it is the biggest haul of bottles we have ever found. Hello! Hello. Okay, so here we are at a brand new location. Yeah. I'm really excited to see what we might find in the woods. There's some bottle diggers holes, um, freshly dug ones, some old ones as well. So, come on, let's go and see what we can find. Yeah, possibilities are endless, like I always say. <laughs> but yeah, let's do it. I spot down here looks like a pipe a clay pipe oh it is oh beautiful look at that it's an Irish pipe or an Irish themed pipe it's got a harp Celtic harp and three shamrocks oh look yeah I've not seen that three shamrock design before so that's wonderful oh good find That'll clean up really nicely as well. Okay, so there looks like there's been a lot going on here. Some recent holes up there. And I found this massive piece of glass, a really, really pretty blue glass. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm thinking for beads, but it's just so thick. It's so thick. I don't even think the camera picks up the color of that accurately it's really beautiful anyway i think i'll leave that and this all looks very fresh look at this it's a bottle here that is plain but look it's still got its cork in okay so just look at all of these bottles and we said we weren't going to take any bottles home with us today but we might Look, it's, they're all the way down here. Rex. This is like bottle paradise. Alex says it's bottle paradise. <sighs> and Alex has found something interesting oh, yes. over here. Two things actually. I've just picked up something else. Look at this plate. Oh, this wow. antique plate. It's complete. Not cracked. Not cracked. Not chipped. It's got a little. Oh, that's beautiful. What's that? Some kind of little bird. And yeah. And an um, ivy. ivy. Oh wow, that's and so cool. This bottle. But it's wait like a, a minute. It's, it's it's been sheared. But it look, it's like a bottle but without the top, but it's been made like that purposefully. Isn't that weird? That is. Wow. Weird finds. And I'm really pleased with that plate. That's brilliant. That's fantastic. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else do I see. I haven't had a chance to see it all yet. So, what have we got down here? There's a little clear bottle. This is a lovely sheer top where the top's being cracked off and then put back in the flame to um, to get the sharp edges off. Probably uh, a glue pot or something, or blacking pot. We've got the sauce bottle, we've got the bovril bottles. Little bottle here, it's got something on it. Um, Stevens Brothers, it'll be furniture polish. And lots of other little bottles, look. Just endless bottles, meat paste jar, um, some sort of liqueur bottle there, like a little pickle jar, there's another furniture polish jar. Just wow, anyone who's wanting little bottles. You feel mad. And look what I've just found, it's like one of those toothpaste pot bottoms. Oh, there's a slug on there, I'll put him down there. Um, but look, it's beautiful uh, blue all the way around the edge. Oh no. I wonder if one of our lids will fit it. I love it. There's another one here, it's plain. Another one here, and that's plain. And another one here, that's plain. So yeah, a little pot collection. Okay, so over there I see not one, but two plant pots. Yeah, two plant pots. Okay, let's go and see. <laughs> see if they're whole. First one, yeah. Second one, also yes, oh my goodness, look. Two whole plant pots, how good's that? I put them down here because I saw a bottle before that I noticed was embossed and I think it says 
Fennings Fever Cure Cura. Fennings Fever Cura, which I don't think we've actually ever found before. So I'll put that to one side and we'll look that up later as well. There's so much here, including this I also picked up before and it's got an applied lip. Look at that, it's an applied lip. Mum's also got this bottle here, which is like pyramid shaped. We've never seen one of those before either. Look at that, and down here, little bottle. Oh, that's the essence of coffee and chicory, which I found lots of. Oh, and a little pot. How cool is that? Oh, this bottle here, it's got embossing on it actually. What's that say? Sharps furniture cream. Oh, shame it's broken. Oh my goodness, that's cool. Uh, might look it up. You never know, there's so much here to look at. What's this? Tablespoons. Um, we got a every, oh my goodness, plain bottle, sauce bottle. Yet another patent medicine. This one was produced by Alfred Fennings, patent medicine manufacturer in the Isle of Wight. It went onto the market in the mid 19th century and went on to be sold well after Fanning's death in 1900. Look, it's a little stoneware. Oh, I love it. And what else is down here? A little stoneware lid. Did I show you that stoneware? I'm too excited to get things into shot. Um, stuff underneath, oh, vulcanite stopper. Stuff underneath the um, oh that's a little bovril underneath the leaves get it out in a minute oh wow look at that tiny little bottle this is a foot warmer lid um, it's just ends oh look there's a little poison bottle we, <laughs> we came here and on the way that's still got its lid in we said we're not going to take any bottles today, but all there are are bottles. Oh, look at that, it's got a lip. I've got a feeling we're going to be lugging most of these bottles home with us. Oh, wow, look at this. It's like a tiny flask. I've not seen one of those. Sorry, I'm going too fast. I'm going to have to slow down. Oh, wow, Dinnerford's Magnesia. Oh, that's brilliant, yeah. Oh, yes, look. A blob top, like an applied blob top. That's really cool. Oh, brilliant. Some great bottles down here, guys. Actually, I saw two halves of a bottle here. Look, there is half, and up here, the other half of, I think, the same bottle. So, if I fit them together... Uh... Yeah, look, they fit perfectly together and it's quite a clean break, look. So, so I'll put it over here. Oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> it's a vial, of course. Keep that in my, this is my keep pile over here. So anything you want to keep going over there. I'm actually quite tempted to take this as well because it's got that applied lip. So I don't know about that. And over here, it's a bead, yes gorgeous look at that blue bead blue glass bead and over here as well spotted this bottle because look at that neck look at that lip that a beautiful oh really oh look mum's got one like two what like they're cream pots or something aren't they two applied lip bottles look how crude they are isn't that beautiful yeah i love those so i think they're definitely going to be keepers oh yeah that is really weird. That is an unusual lid, yeah. Oh wow, some corkers. <laughs> oh, I'm getting really overexcited here. Oh yes, there's two, oh my goodness. Two whole pump pots. This is crazy. Oh, it's compo. Oh right, that's quite interesting as well, yeah. Okay, so mine says Taylor's Company Limited, so yeah i'm gonna keep that as well oh wow overwhelming amount of stuff going on here it's absolutely brilliant and there's another compo taylor's drug company was founded by william baker mason the son of a cooper from whitby in the north of england 
William was apprenticed to a chemist in Thursk, and by the time he was 23, in 1873, William was a chemist in his own right. That year, he married Jane Ann Taylor, after whom he named the company Taylor & Co. By 1927, they had shops all over Britain, and by the time the company merged with Timothy White's in 1935, they had over 373 shops. And another plant pot. That's about five plant pots we've got so far. And look at all this. Look at it. Look at them. And these are all Victorian. Just about all of these are Victorian. This is a treasure trove. Is this a little um, sniffing bottle? Yes, I think it is. Sniffing bottle. Sniffing, what do you call them? Uh, Sniff, smelling salt. Smelling salt. Smelling bottle. <laughs> sniffing bottle. I knew I was saying something wrong. Little smelling bottle. A lovely little uh, pot here. Had some sort of ointment in it. There's a bottle, a jar here, and it says Cut Now's Powder. So I'm going to be taking that because that's something great to look up. So I've never heard of that. Cut nose powder. Sigismund Cutnow acted as a commercial traveller for the successful family business Cutnow Brothers Limited of New York, who manufactured and sold various patent medicines. Sigismund often travelled to the United Kingdom to sell and promote the company's products there. But it was a murder case that was to be the US company's downfall. In 1898, Cutnow's powders were actually used as a murder weapon in the notorious Molyneux murders. Apparently, Roland Molyneux, a wealthy New Yorker, was accused of murdering two people by sending one a bottle of painkillers, which killed his cousin, and the other a bottle of Cutnow's improved effervescent Carlsbad powder both laced with cyanide of mercury. Molyneux was freed on a technicality, but the Cutnow brand was permanently marred, and in 1899 they were forced to declare themselves bankrupt. Knowing the English market, Sigismund set up his own branch of the business in London, S. Cutnow & Co. The product was renamed Cutnow's Powders, the bottle we have here. Sigismund Cutnow died a wealthy man and his brand survived to the 1940s. I think this might have been a mirror at one time, but all the backing's coming off. But you know what? I wonder if I could make that into a mirror again. Put some new silvering on the back. I might take that. Look at this. It's um it's a test tube and it's completely whole. How on earth did that survive? I hope it survives the journey home. Put it here. Alex just found a really interesting shape as well. Well, I found been collecting some of the tiniest bottles because we can get away with collecting those. But look at this bad boy. I have not seen one no. like that before. Now that is most certainly a perfume or some yeah. kind of cosmetic bottle. Is it a ground in look? Um, yes, actually, uh -huh. I think it is. Um, but I don't know if it has anything on it. Maybe. Oh, it has a registration number. Oh, well, so that'll give be us able a to date. date it. What oh. is the number? Because I might be able to. Um, the number is six one eight four one two. I think that's late Victorian. Is it? Yeah. Do you think yeah, so? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I recognise the six numbers. Oh, there's just so much here. My eyes are going like. <laughs> <laughs> we just ah, we weren't prepared one of for those bottles I found before, but this one's clear. The other one I've got is like um, is aqua. We weren't going to take any bottles, but we have to take some of these oh. because they're quite old and interesting, like oh, me. This, this <laughs> <laughs> no, but this thing, this bottles here that I've not seen any before, brands that I've not seen before. Yeah, we've so got to look them up. We have to look them up. We just have to. So, <laughs> let's do it. Okay, so Mum's still down there amongst the bottle sea of bottles. And I've decided to come up the bank a little bit up here because there's bottles over there. And down here, they're just everywhere, to be honest. Okay, so 
up here, I did spot a few interesting ones. And um, that is like a little smelling bottle, I think. But yeah, it's broken. And um, this one, oh, that's got embossing on it, look. What's that say? Oh, wow. Look at the color of that. It's like a sky blue color. Valoretti's, I think. Valoretti's. That is really, yeah. I think it is Valoretti's. I don't think we've ever found this bottle before either. So that is so cool. Beautiful colour. Bishop's Valorettes was originally sold as Bishop's Citrate of Lithia. It was manufactured by Alfred Bishop Limited, manufacturing chemist, London. It was first advertised in 1898 as a cure for gout, rheumatism, gravel stones and allied diseases. Bishops also made Citric of Caffeine and Bishops Citrate of Magnesia, which is a bottle we also found that day. Both bottles are a lovely shade of pale blue and will be added to our ever-growing patent medicine bottle collection. Wow, oh my goodness, okay. Let's go down here. There's like a little path that leads. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness, look at the size of this digger's hole. This is like the biggest, this is crazy. This is like the biggest bottle digger's hole I have ever seen. More bottles over there as well, but there's something down by my feet first. Looks like a little cup. It says George Hotel Harrogate. So yeah, that might be quite interesting. And there's something else over there. Oh yes, look, it's a little like hooded figure. A little head. Oh, that is cute. Take my cup. Wow, okay, so not sure where to start over here. <laughs> I need something to put my bottles in. There's just too much, I can't carry everything. Wow, look at all this. <sighs> I'm gonna have to call mum over here to come and have a look at all this with me because there's just so much here. Look up there. Wow. Okay, mum's joined me over here um, in our epic bottle diggers hole. Look up there. It's quite dangerous actually. Overhanging trees and stuff. It is a little bit precarious. But the stuff all sticking out this bank here. Look at this. Look up there. But I don't think I'll be going any closer to that. It's quite dangerous, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, yeah, little vial. Gonna have to take that. Look, this is, what's this? Plain marmalade jar, might take it. We've got so many of them though. That is like a plain paste pot, I think. Might keep that. Um, got some sauce, oh no, boot polish bottle, I think. What's that say? I'm not sure. Oh, it says Bradford there on that side. That might be quite interesting. I'm not sure what it is actually. But what's this? Oh, fig syrup. Yep. Got lots of those. Disinfectant bottle with the ridges on it and another Californian fig syrup, of course. And there's another kind of like disinfectant bottle, I think. Medicine. Lovely, really lovely embossed Holix jar. What's that lovely jar? And another sauce bottle. Wow. There's so much here. It's absolutely crazy. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Actually, I've just seen something sticking up the bank here, but it's really like like oh really like crusted in there but I don't think I'm going to touch it because it is so dangerous oh my goodness Alex has found a baby bottle it's a mini HV sauce I've not found <sighs> one of these before look it's like a, a traveler's sample yeah a little sample bottle and we've got a stop a feeding bottle baby's feeding bottle stopper yeah which is really cool disturbing yes got a bit of a disturbing history but and another um, stopper for our Well, we've got warmers. lots of those so now. <laughs> we've got three. Look at how much we've got. 
on the way here we were like we're not taking I know any I know bottles. I know but look but <laughs> and there's more we haven't looked through yet oh what's this Anzora what's that never heard of I'm it not <laughs> oh no oh, we're going no. to have to take that as well oh, no. <laughs> so the bottles are actually still coming up out of the ground these are the ones we're going to keep but they just keep coming it's crazy it really is crazy but down here I found this bottle that has the stopper in but look at that the neck is cracked and for some reason look no it's just not gonna come out so I think we might have to smash that stopper out unfortunately um, but there's another bottle down here that's cool because it still has a stopper in it's Elman's Embrocation and yeah look the glass stopper is still on the top there which I think is it's really interesting it's really cool and um, these are all of the bottles that we've kind of dug out so far this one in oh really yeah so this one in particular look is the most beautiful sky blue color look at that I really like that bottle but of course we're not going to take everything here there's just too much so there's a little bottle down here and i think i know what it is already and the cork's still there as well look it looks like a bonds marking ink bottle which is so weird because we actually found one of these an older version of this not very long ago mum found it but look this cork actually fits in the top of this bottle I think it's broken off and can you see that I don't know how well you can see that but it looks as if the ink is actually still preserved inside the bottle oh my goodness okay so there's another little bottle down here as well and um, I think I saw something else over here but <laughs> but this is just amazing look at that I can't believe that I've just found that. Mum just found one. How I'm so pleased. Okay, so I think I've spot something down here. What's that? Oh, can you see it? I think you can see it. Yeah, it's a cod marble. We found an older cobalt blue version of Bond's marking ink before. This one probably dates to the early 20th century and still has the now crystallised ink still inside, which was an indelible ink used to mark laundry. Really um, fancy salad dressing bottles that I really like and I've got a project in mind for those so I'm taking it. And there's a jar here and it doesn't look very exciting but the lip is so applied and blobby I have to take it it does have something on the bottom I think it's just a number but look at that lip that is fantastic and it's a lovely color and what's this I spy down here it looks awfully like a leg it's a leg <laughs> This bit of leather here has been part of a bag. I think this is like the front flap and it's had straps on there. And that's the flap, but I'm gonna take that. I don't know whether I can sort of restore that leather. It's pretty brittle, but I'm gonna try. Maybe I could make something out of it. I found two really beautiful meat paste jars. I think these are quite early ones. And they've got a registration number on the bottom. And by the looks of it, starting with a five, I think these are actually quite early Victorian. They are actually Victorian. 
So they are gorgeous and I'm keeping them. And down here, it's one of these lovely genie bottles that I want to keep. And down here's another one. I absolutely love these. And we've got a project in mind for them. And there's a lovely jar. There is just too much. I never thought I'd say it, but there's too much. And it's all good. And I think we need a truck to take this home in. Just found this stopper and it has like a slit in the top of it. And I've never seen a glass stopper like that before. But I've found another metal bottle up here, look. And it's a screw top, but that doesn't necessarily mean it isn't old. And it's got embossing on the side as well, which I noticed. And I can't read it right now, but yeah. That might be something to look up later. Oh, S. I'm not sure what it says, actually. Yeah, but... Oh, on that side, actually, I think it says tabloid. Yeah, look, it says tabloid, so it was a, ta it was a pill bottle, basically. Oh, look, down here, my second bead of the day. Brilliant. You know how we love a bead quite a nice meat paste spot there actually, look at that. And there's quite a few things down here. So we've got a meat paste like jar down there as well. And what's that? Oh, I thought that was something. It's not. Oh, actually look at this bottle. It says poisonous. It's not to be taken. It's a poison bottle. Oh, that's quite cool. Okay, so I might take that as well. I also saw a bottle over here oh, on this rock. Yeah, it's got like a stopper in it and on the end of it, look at that. It's like a writing quill or something. How weird is that? It's like for writing? A little quill? I don't know, is it like a marking ink bottle for marking clothes with? I'm not sure, but that is really quite interesting. I've just got ink on me as well. There's actually still ink in that bottle as well. That is pretty cool. So I'm definitely going to take that. There's mum maxing out, relaxing on her dump chair. <laughs> How random is this? It's just like this like deck chair thing, like garden chair in the woods. <laughs> and the bottle diggers just brought it for, you know, chilling on. An absolutely lovely big jar here. It's covered in bird poo. But look at the colour of it and the size of it. That's fantastic. Over here looks like a wee bottle. Oh, look at that. That's cute and it's got pink stuff in it. I wonder what that was. Something horrid maybe, but you know. That's funny, I was just saying to mum, we haven't found many clay pipes. And there's one there. But, wait a minute, that's not clay, that's wood, <laughs> that's not a clay pipe, that's a wooden pipe, oh that's so cool, that is really cool, wow, I remember my granddad used to have wooden pipes, um, what else, have, oh this corks, I'm thinking might take some of these corks actually. Little bottle, but nothing on it. Oh wow! Look at this! Look at that jar! Oh lovely! It's a, it must have manganese in it because look, can you see that? It's going purple. Oh wow! Purple jam or marmalade jar. Yes please, I'll take that. And I found this cool bottle here. That mum said I should take because has some kind of um, company name on it. I think it's P D and Co. or D P and Co. I'm not sure how to read these monograms. I really like that jar. It's turning purple. That's so cool. Oh, and there's another cork. And take these corks to put our bottles. And what's this down here? A pepper pot. Oh no, it's just got one little hole in it. 
Oh, that's a shame. There's all sorts of other little bottles. Plain, plain. Oh, that one's got a metal stopper in it. There's a lid here. What's this? Oh, it's plain. But I might still take that. Okay, so I've just found this um, brass sort of ornamental piece. Yeah. It doesn't look much at the moment, but we might be able to straighten that out and to use it. Yeah, that and could be really pretty. Alex has found this purple jar. You look at that, I love that. It's gone purple because it's got manganese in it. It's been exposed oh, to the UV rays. And I didn't show you, but I've got this bad lad. It's a wooden. Oh, a wooden pipe. And it's got something in the bottom there, look. Oh, yeah. I see that in the bottom. I'm not sure what that plug. is. Yeah. But um, it's not broken. It kind of finishes off there. Yeah, they would have. It probably would have had uh, like an agate mouthpiece on it. What wood is it made out of? Seven knows. It's very durable. Yeah. Whatever it was made out of. Fantastic. And look, we've got a wood on the theme of wood. Looks like a lignum vitae stopper here. Yeah, because this is and it's carved. At an earlier dump, um, I think it's it's too early to have the vulcanite stoppers. Yeah, it is a little bit, isn't it? Although I think I did find one over further away there. We'll we'll let that one off. Yeah. We'll let that we'll one let off. That and look, that's knackered. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just funny because look at it. Oh, and I've got this really cute little bottle here. Okay, so there's a few interesting things here. This has got a ground in top. But I'm not sure what it was. This one is a sheer top or snap top with um it's been ground smooth there's a little glass here a little bottle there and a lid there's a little um little unusual bottle here and it's got pascal on it which sounds french and it's got a registration number which will give me the year it was made so that's fantastic I love that. This cute little bottle was from a James Pascal limited toy sweet shop of the early 20th century and would have once contained real sweets and how very sweet it is. So what we've got here then? It's a teacup uh, minus this handle but if you look inside there's something different about this it's got this bit here and this would, have oh, come, yeah. this would have come across like that and it's called a moustache cup because it, it protected your moustache oh from getting out of <laughs> when you're sipping your tea so your moustache doesn't get wet <laughs> oh that's quite cool what a shame it's broken know, it would have been lovely but i don't know maybe we should take it we could put a plant it, in it. yeah it's a perfect it's really size pretty. for a plant pot isn't yeah. it let's take it and here's a mini good old back house bottle. Tiny. Look. I found this vase and the top's all broken, but that is beautiful. Look at the colour of it. Emerald green. And I might try and grind the top down. I can't leave that. Look at it. I've come deeper into the woods and found even more. So this is beautiful green bottle which I'm going to take and a bottle there with nothing on it and yeah look at all just oh another a ponds bottle ponds extract I think that's quite cool I might take that you've probably heard of ponds cold cream which is still sold today but did you know that ponds brand started with a Native American medicine man the Iran Tilden Pond was born in 1800 in Augusta, Oneida County, New York. It is here, it said, he befriended a medicine man or traditional healer of the Oneida tribe who taught him about the healing properties of witch hazel, a shrub local to the area. The plant was known by the Oneida people as an effective treatment for burns, boils and wounds. The medicine man made his extract by making a tea from part of the plants. He worked with Pond, teaching him how to recognise the shrub, which parts to collect and how best to make the extract. 
1846, it's thought that they went into business together as T.T. Pond & Co, selling the extract locally as gold and treasure, and later as Pond's extract. Sometime before 1850, Pond and the medicine man apparently sold the business to Edmund Munson and Alexander Hart, who owned an iron foundry. Mysteriously, Pond died the same year and the fate of the medicine man was never recorded. The company changed hands several times after that, but the medicine continued to be sold as Pond's extract. To preserve the extract, the original method of production was abandoned and it was distilled instead. Ironically, the distillation process all but destroyed any medical value from the tannins in the plant, making the product all but useless. The name of the medicine man was never recorded, and in most counts of the story of Pond's extract, he has been written out of history, with all credit going to Mr Pond as the inventor of the extract. Okay, so this is probably the biggest, well it is, the biggest haul of bottles we have ever found. Definitely. That's great, just look, there are literally thousands, there must be tens of thousands of, of bottles <laughs> just lying around here. Yeah, over the whole area, yeah. but this pile here. That's the biggest pile of bottles I've ever <laughs> seen in my life and some of them are absolute corkers, aren't they? They are. Some really good ones, so we're going to sort the ones out that we want and leave the rest behind so most of them will just have to stay here. I want to take them all. I know, me too. We can't but though. We can't. <laughs> so it begins the great sort. Which ones do we absolutely want and which ones are we absolutely going to leave behind? interesting bottles but look that's not very often you find a red bottle look at that that's beautiful it's called cranberry glass wow i'm not sure what that was looks like a little salt thing but it's probably i don't know perfume oh it's been hand polished on the bottom and it's got it's got only one layer of the red the rest is clear because of how expensive the bread was. Wow. That's beautiful. We think this beautiful artifact is a cranberry glass salt or pepper shaker, probably dating from the early 20th century. The gorgeous cranberry colour is made by adding gold chloride to the glass mix. The first known cranberry glass was produced by the ancient Romans. Because real gold is used in its production, cranberry glass has always been primarily used for special and decorative glassware and is still very collectible today. Who knows, mum might make a new silver top for it just like the one she made for this salt shaker which was found behind our house. Just pulled this out the ground, it was just sticking out the ground. And look, it's a big old medicine bottle. Look at that. That's fantastic. I know. I love it. it says Harrogate. It says, what does that say? Hansford and Dawson. Chemist, chemist Harrogate. Fantastic. Look, big old chemist bottle. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah, something to look up as well. Yeah. Ooh. And I see two finds down here, actually. Look at this. Is that bead? No, it's not. I think that's the end of a pin. Probably the end of like a hat pin. A little like really light pink glass blob. My second find I think is a bit of a doll's face. Yeah. Oh yes, look at that. It's a little face. Would have been a, a doll's head, but unfortunately. Yeah, it looks like that. <laughs> the base of this hill here. 
in this gravelly part looks like the kind of place you'd find the little treasures. So, let's have a look. I've got a feeling there is... We will find something. Oh, look, found something already. It's a vulcanite. Oh, with a hand on it. Look at that. That's cool. I can't see where it's Burton. I think I can see Burton on there. Let's see what else we can find down here. And something else. I hope this is what I think it is. It's like a vial, but look at that, it's an amber vial. Oh my goodness, I've never found an amber one before, that's so cool. It's like a little test tube, an amber one. That's really cool. Oh wow. Isn't that cool? I found um, an amber oh, bottle and it's right, got uh, Wellington Chemical Works on the bottom. Oh, is it Welcome Chem Chemical Works? Oh yes it is! Because <laughs> we found well, one of those before! We found one before! Welcome chemical work! I think this down here has to be the most unusual bottle stop. Oh wow, look at that! That is really weird. Look at the shape of that! I've never seen anything like that before. A stopper like that. What's it say? Oh, Munich! Oh cool! Can't see the name on the top very well. But that must be German. That is really interesting. We'll definitely have to look that up. I love the shape of it. This swing style ceramic stopper is marked Lowenbrau Munchen with a rampant lion motif and is from a beer bottle probably dating from the early 20th century. Munchen, also known as Munich, is a city in Bavaria, Germany where Lohenbrau beer is said to have been produced since 1383. The beer is still being made today, so if that date is correct, that means it's been on the go for an incredible 639 years. So we've just found three modern plant pots. <laughs> Look at that! They're only plastic, but they'll be very useful and also it's good, quite to pick, hard. good to pick plastic up. Yes, it is. Always good to take plastic. Plus, we can use these. Yeah. <laughs> so, recycle. Unusual find here. It's the back of a doll's head, the shoulders of a doll's head. It says made in G, and that would be Germany. Look, there's crossbones on the back of the neck. It's GK, crossbones N. And I'm curious, so I'm going to keep that and see if I can look up the maker. That's cool. Crossbones. I've never seen that before. This is broken, but look how cool it would have been. Harson and something. Leeds and Harrogate. And it's like a corkscrew on top. But obviously, like a massive chunk of it's not there. Oh, that would have been really cool. What a shame. Okay, so I thought this bottle's quite cool. It has the stuff still in it, which is pretty gross. But it says, Southwells, licorice and honey, linitus. What on earth is that? Whatever that is, is still in there. <laughs> Ugh. Okay, last find of the day. We've got a little lead or tin, tin man, soldier. little soldier. He's missing an arm. Which <laughs> probably swung. Yeah, looks like it was like articulated, look. And he's missing his feet. Oh. Well, <laughs> go on our lead man collection. In our wounded soldier collection. Oh yeah. This really was our biggest haul of bottles yet, and what beauties they all are. So many patent medicine bottles, from a time before the NHS, when many people just couldn't afford the services of a qualified doctor. It's not surprising that they turned to the quacks and chemists for their cure-all potions. And not surprising either that so many changed their profession to jump on the lucrative patent medicine bandwagon. But here they all are, all colours, shapes and sizes, dating from the 1870s to the first half of the 20th century. 
Other bottles contained everything from food and drinks to ink, perfume and sweets. A glassy history of life over a hundred years ago. Okay, so we've had, we actually really have had the most amazing day today because we've literally discovered the biggest bottle hoard I have ever seen. Yeah, well, me we've too. both seen. Just amazing. And they're, they're really all over a hundred years old, yeah. which makes them so interesting. And a lot of them have things written on them that we've been able to look up because yeah. you've already seen that bit. We don't know. We don't you know already yet. Know, you haven't seen them nice and shiny. <laughs> um, but yeah, look at all we've left. Like most of them have, have been left behind, so oh, it's crazy. We just can't isn't it? carry them. No. We've got a long way to walk. It's not like we can bring the car no. even close. So. Unfortunately, but we've got probably too much. Um, we've got to wash these. We've got to wash these. God help us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone so much for liking this video, for commenting down below, and of course for subscribing. That's really important. And a big special thank you to everyone who has donated to our channel. And of course, to all of our wonderful patrons on Patreon who help to keep us going every month. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again next week. Bye. Bye.